On today's episode, we are getting into the latest space news, including leaked renderings of an updated Starship Moonlander, a new launch window has opened at Starbase, and researchers are developing a real-life tractor beam to help eliminate space junk. This is The Space Race. On November 2nd, images of what appeared to be an updated design of the SpaceX Human Landing System Moonlander Starship variant were posted on X.com by user David Willis. Claiming to be new renders of the vehicle from SpaceX, Willis posted two images that show the HLS in orbit of Earth and parked on the lunar surface. But other than his claims, there's really nothing to say that these images are from SpaceX at all. In fact, when asked for his source, Willis literally just said, trust me. All right, memes aside, it's pretty clear we can't trust that these images are genuine, but it has been over a year and a half since we've seen any renders of the Starship Lander, so on the off chance these images carry any weight, let's just quickly go over them here. First off, the images are fairly good looking, but that's not too difficult to do these days. The most credible thing for these images is the nose cone, which shows just the slightest hint of a Dragon Capsule-like docking port. This hasn't really been a point of contention in the community, it makes a good deal of sense that the modified crewed versions of the Starship would make use of a similar connection point as the company's only other crew vehicle. A careful look at the flanks of the rocket shows a new design for the landing thrusters, changing them into individual vented pods along the side rather than the open RCS-style ports from the original renders. This is also actually in line with some of the only sightings of HLS hardware we've seen from Starbase back in August as SpaceX maneuvered around their crude prototype nose cone. Again, nothing concrete, it's just interesting that this is lining up a little bit. The strange bits start to stand out with the deployable solar panels. From the render, these flexible panels would be stored in the wall of the fuselage and deployed once in orbit and would likely be retractable, but it doesn't seem like a method SpaceX would use if they could avoid it. There are a lot of points of failure with this sort of system, and the second render shows it deployed while the HLS is landed and in the moon's gravity. There would likely be even more problems with retracting and deploying the system, it just doesn't seem right. Following on to that, the legs on this render look thinner and spindly, the opposite of what SpaceX would probably redesign them to be, that's got to be a mistake at best and a clear sign of a hoax at worst. Overall, there isn't much radically different with these renders from the last ones, but too many things stood out as strange design choices for us, not to mention a total lack of verified source. We're going to have to say that these aren't genuine. Wherever Willis got them from, it likely wasn't SpaceX, though we'd be happy to be proven wrong. The Starship saga continues this week with the FAA completing its safety review, the Fish and Wildlife Service scrambling to complete their site analysis of the Boca Chica coast, and SpaceX booking some very specific outside help and giving us a potential timeline for their next Starship test launch. Starting with the FAA on October 31st, the administration, which has been in charge of recertifying the massive Starship Super Heavy rocket for flight operations, announced that they had officially completed their safety review. You could all be forgiven for wondering how yet another review was going on after all that other work previously. Back in early September, the FAA closed their mishap investigation, which involved auditing the SpaceX account of their April 20th test flight, which exploded after a four-minute burn. That investigation involved a more direct probe of the vehicle and available evidence as to what had gone wrong. The safety review has an altogether different focus that being the danger to property and the local population. The FAA also clarified that this review looks over the applicant's organization, safety protocols, and the flight safety features they employ. And since SpaceX has been working so closely with the FAA this whole time, this part of their review was extremely easy and quick to complete. But this review was definitely not the major barrier to the next Starship flight, that dubious honor goes to the investigation currently being conducted by the Fish and Wildlife Service, and it's all because of that cool new water deluge system that SpaceX designed to make sure Starship doesn't blow another hole in the Starbase concrete. The FWS has a very strict mission statement, which revolves around ensuring that the local environment 
isn't adversely affected by whatever new activity is applying for an operating license. They are usually called on to test the area around drilling operations, but rocketry is also something they cover, as many rockets tend to use toxic fuels, shed harmful debris, and produce noise and vibration at levels harmful to most wildlife. That said, those concerns have already been dealt with for Starship, but their new deluge system has not. Over the last couple of months, SpaceX has designed and built a slick flame diverter system that pumps thousands of gallons of water through a steel plate directly under the engines of their super heavy booster, cooling the plate and absorbing both the engine blast and the noise it produces. From early testing, it definitely looks like it will work as intended, but that's just the problem. Water is fairly absorbent when it comes to chemicals, so the fuel, hydraulic oils, and what little debris could be produced during a launch could be a problem for the local coastline as thousands of gallons of potentially contaminated water gets dumped from the deluge system. However, the past week or two have been marked with congressional hearings about the need to cut through this additional red tape caused by the licensing procedures being beholden to several different authorities instead of a single unified one, and all this talk seems to have lit a fire under the FWS teams at Boca Chica. With a window of possibly 135 days of testing, the FAA and FWS have both stated that this stage of the investigation shouldn't take long at all. And maybe that's why SpaceX is back to booking possible launch times. Back in October, when it looked like things might be wrapping up, SpaceX issued a notice to Mariners that included a small stretch of days that didn't end up getting used for obvious reasons. These notices are put out to warn any boats and ships to keep clear of the launch trajectory of a rocket, just in case. And it's a good indication of a serious possibility for a launch, except when they have to reschedule. Recently, another notice to Mariners went out, warning local water traffic that a launch could take place from Boca Chica, Texas, no earlier than November 6th. That's a good sign, but as we've seen, it's hardly solid. Luckily, we have something way more concrete. It looks like a WB-57 plane has been booked for work from November 3rd to 10th. These planes are converted bombers which NASA and other US agencies now use for high-altitude photography. One of these planes took part in the April 20th launch of Starship and is the source of some of those closer videos we've seen from that event and might be what this booking is for. So while this is also something that could be rescheduled, it's a much more difficult thing to have an expensive research aircraft waiting to fly if you're not going to use it and likely expensive to rebook if you miss that launch date, which makes this a pretty confident move by SpaceX considering there's still an active investigation going on involving processing samples of the Boca Chica soil. But, as usual, it's likely the folks at SpaceX are working very closely with the Fish and Wildlife Services and the FAA so they could very well know something we don't here. It seems pretty far-fetched that a Starship launch is in the cards so early this month, but if SpaceX is booking planes, then it's gotta be close to go time. This new space race has a huge problem and it's been growing with every launch. And even with every attempt to mitigate or solve it, space junk is building up in Earth's orbit, and finding a good way to clean it all up is proving very difficult. But with a new space race comes new technology, which opens the door to solutions straight out of science fiction, and for researchers at the University of Colorado Boulder, one of these sci-fi tropes seems to actually be within reach. We are talking about a real-life tractor beam. That's right, a staple of space-based fiction from Star Trek to Star Wars, the ability to use an energy-based beam to hold and attract a distant target might soon be a reality thanks to a research team led by Professor Hans-Petter Schaub. Unlike the many strange versions of fictional tractor beams from sci-fi, Schaub's team is using the physics of electrostatic charge to manipulate objects in a zero-g environment. The current design is centered around a spacecraft armed with an electron gun, which would fire a stream of negative particles at the target, be it a piece of debris or an old satellite. The target would then become negatively charged and be attracted to the nearest positively charged object, which in this case would be the towing spacecraft, and could then be maneuvered wherever an operator would like, albeit slowly. 
And this isn't just theoretical either, the team at UC Boulder have been testing and iterating their design for over a decade now with fairly strong results. The university is home to a metallic vacuum chamber called the Electrostatic Charging Laboratory for Interactions between Plasma and Spacecraft, or Eclipse, which allows them to test the effects of their electrostatic tractor on a smaller scale. The biggest benefit to using an electrostatic tractor is it doesn't require contact between the operations vehicle and its target, substantially lowering the possibility of creating more debris, which is the biggest concern during orbital cleanup. Orbital cleanup is becoming a well-studied field these days, with several companies turning their hands to making a new type of vehicle. Magnetic grapplers, harpoons, and robotic arms are all being tested in orbit right now, but all of them involve direct contact with their target. Whether it's debris from past launches or old satellites, space trash can range from the size of a basketball all the way up to the size of a school bus, and all of them moving at their own speeds and rotating in odd ways. Trying to hit something like that with a harpoon or grapple or even just matching its speed to attempt a grab with robotic arms are all extremely dangerous to both objects and will almost certainly lead to more debris, something that the electrostatic tractor method wouldn't have to deal with. But that doesn't mean there aren't problems with the tractor, of course. The first is that this method is very slow. Moving a single satellite-sized target into a different orbit would take more than a month. These speeds mean that without a huge fleet of orbital tugs armed with these electrostatic devices, there's no way this method could keep up with the current pace of launches. Which brings us to the second big problem, funding. As a university team, it's safe to say that Schaub's researchers just don't have the sort of capital to make a full-sized vehicle armed with a very expensive electron gun, so if this tractor idea is going to get used at a level where it can be effective, the technology would almost certainly have to be picked up by a commercial provider. Currently, the team is looking at finishing their small-scale tests in UC Boulder's Eclipse machine, and then they plan on finding someone to fund their first mission, but considering the safety of their method alone, it might not take much longer to convince a larger company to help them out. Meet us back here every week for more updates on everything aerospace industry and interstellar exploration related. Make sure to give the video a thumbs up today if you liked it, that really helps us out, for real. And subscribe to the Space Race for more videos just like this. We do one long form essay and one news update every week. And if you'd like more, we've got two more on the screen for you right now.